evening, folks, and welcome to Garbage Theater, tonight's installment, Alien Predator. I'm your host, Chase, with my co-hosts, Blake and John. Hello. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, happy Father's Day Eve, gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> this episode's not out on Father's Day Eve, but we're recording on Father's Day Eve. Yeah, I was very disappointed today because I had to put on pants. <laughs> I think I've put on pants that are of the non-sweat variety. I could count on one hand in the last three months how many times. Uh, yeah, I even. And I'm not without, complaining about even, that either. Even without a global pandemic, I ref, I refuse to wear pants around the house. Can't stand it. So. No. I'm, I'm like the Goldberg's dad. Like, right when I come home, pants are coming <laughs> off. Like, that's how I roll. Yeah. Are you going to put on airs for your family? Come on. Hey, who cares? Yeah, forget <laughs> that shit. <laughs> Blake's walking you, around his house like Donald Duck. No, like... like <laughs> I got shorts on, but... <laughs> <laughs> but look, if oh, I wanted boy. to... Uh, that'd be a real good way to show who's boss around here. You're straight up Winnie the Pooh it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Does anybody got anything to chat about before we get into the, the dirty? Um, well, uh, first of all, um, today, the day of this recording, is the 45th anniversary of a wonderful film I know we all love. Oh, no. Uh, which we wouldn't with without we wouldn't have all these shitty shark movies to dunk on <laughs> so oh. hey happy anniversary to jaws <laughs> hey here i am not even paying attention to that i should know that 45th anniversary god damn wow <laughs> you, you know what it's the 30th anniversary of no ghost dad <laughs> okay just as worthy a film as jaws <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forget god damn it where did I see it it was either a stand up comic or somebody was talking I can't remember what they were talking about but they are talking about things in context and they're like if you watch the last 10 minutes of Jaws you're like why is this asshole trying to kill this shark <laughs> <laughs> he just hates the shark yeah <laughs> Oh, Lord. And also, you know, Ian Holm. Oh, yes. Oh, jeez. I know. My dude. <sighs> uh, he went to the Grey Havens and sailed away to Valinor. Yep. To be housed in the halls of Mandos forever. I am a nerd. <laughs> you put it a lot more <laughs> elegantly than I did. I, te I texted my friend, uh, my friend Aaron and I said, well, he's on that boat riding across the water now. <laughs> Well, yeah, I just you know that was just, that was just you're right. My way is a little more elegant. Yes, <laughs> I, I think I actually said he's riding that friggin' boat now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sad though. See, technically, you'd be wrong because you're alive when you're on the boat. It's when you make it to the halls of Mandos that you're dead. Yeah, well, Chase, tomato, tomato, <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Well, had to get that out there because I don't want any part of this whole episode to be happy because I am mad. Ah, that's uh, what I yeah. expected. Okay, so, yeah. Well, I've, Alien I've got, Predator. Let's I've hang got on. another piece of oh, glum okay. news, I guess, real quick. Okay. Um, okay. N normally, like, I wouldn't bring this up because this show's not really about, um, like, industry stuff. Well, then like, don't bring it up. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, uh, uh, the last episode, we talked about three movies that I really like, The Bone Tomahawk, Brawl in Cell Block 99, and Dragged Across Concrete. Yes. And they were all produced by a company called Cinestate, mm -hmm. who, um, the day before that episode was released, after it was recorded, you know, before it was released, yeah. there was an article that came out <laughs> in the Daily Beast revealing a culture of sexual harassment on Cinestate Productions. Um... <laughs> So it of looks course. like really bad. <laughs> for of me. course. Um, but anyway, so like the 
Craig Zoller, the director, is not implicated, and uh, there's no references to harassment on his sets specifically. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's a big fucking disaster <laughs> over in the horror scene <laughs> anything, right now. Anything and, you love, uh, <laughs> something's gonna. Well, they're gonna find something. They'll find something. Yeah, the producer, uh, CEO of Cinestate, Dallas Sonye, is like, he's not implicated in any direct harassment, but he like ignored it, apparently, or claims he didn't know about it. Um, a soft Weinstein, they call it. Yeah, well, there's like one guy in particular, he's a producer that worked with them, um, Adam Donaghy. Oh, he's he like, sounds like a perv. Yeah, he's a real scumbag, apparently. I guess he got <laughs> arrested for... Uh, raping an underage girl, so that's cool. Oh Jesus! But um, <laughs> but anyway, I thought I was bringing this down with Ian Hall. You are saying, you know, oh, Cinestate can do no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's made what I a lot of movies that I like, though. It's it's really sad, and they also owned they owned Fangoria magazine. Um, oh, oh, well. so like everybody in Fangoria has jumped ship, and like the magazine's up for sale now, and um. <laughs> Can we buy it? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few million bells I can put toward it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys take bells? Uh, um, but yeah, I just thought I'd mention that uh, we unequivocally condemn sexual harassment <laughs> and very much look forward to a day when women in any industry can go to work without fear of harassment or assault by their co-workers. <laughs> Please don't take anything we say on this show seriously. <laughs> if you haven't learned that yet. <laughs> like I said, uh, I wouldn't have even brought it up if it hadn't been like the proximity to the release of this expo movie. Yeah, to me exactly. like praising their movies. Um uh, so but speaking of horror movies, uh you still got that uh that shutter account? <laughs> I do. I saw an ad for a movie called Blood Machine. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's on Shutter, and I really want to watch it. Shutter's great, but yeah, I mean, I'll you know, Blood right, cool. I'll hit you up. It's like <laughs> cyberpunk stuff, but it's called Blood Machine. You know, like a person would be a blood machine. But okay, I yeah, thought it was not, like a literal cool blood as machine. It at first. Yeah, like because honestly, when I saw the title at first, it was it was a YouTube ad. So of course, I was about to hit the skip button. Yeah. But then I saw in big letters across the screen, Blood Machine. I was like, what the fuck is a blood machine? <laughs> and that's what made me stay. And then after I watched the whole thing, I was like, I really want to watch that. Rat, those rat bastards uh, laser balled us. Yeah, they There's no blood nor machine in this movie. <laughs> I, I mean, I was just about to hit skip ad and then real big, Blood Machine. What? <laughs> See, I thought, I know there's a movie that's about like a killer like industrial press or something like that <laughs> like some <laughs> big piece of like machinery uh and i thought that's what it was but, but no, it actually in- looks good like it's getting a lot of praise like for being i think actually one of the uh the little blurb on the the uh advertisement somebody said it was uh, a cyberpunk wet dream i was like well oh god damn i, I like <laughs> all these things blood machine. <laughs> They're hitting all the right marks for for yeah. advertising there. <laughs> so let's talk about something that's not cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alien Predator. Let's just get this out of the way right now. Sounds like someone's got ants in his pants. It's time for everybody. To go off on a <laughs> Alien Predator. Two things, while separate, are amazing, but put them together, it, I, I'd even venture to say, you can verse them against each other. It would still be better than this piece of shit. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Oh, I would watch God. Paul W.S. Anderson's Alien vs. Predator a thousand times before I ever <laughs> watch this thing again. I would watch it to death before I would watch this thing again. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty bad, but... Like I said, I was expecting it going in. I don't know what you assholes are so upset about. Well, I mean, okay. We've well, okay, we've watched our fair share of Asylum schlock on this podcast. But this one is it, it, like it 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 crossed the line and to into like the the how dare you. You know what? You're right. This one like, was insulting. The audacity of them to call this a movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll see that, yes. that meme. That meme that just says, it's like written in the Harry Potter font that says Harry Potter and the audacity of this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it's like, like clear, clearly, this, this, this is a money laundering front. It has to be. It has yeah, to be. Oh, dude. It must and be. how has nobody brought the hammer down on them yet? Maybe they're too big. They got their their grubby <sighs> little hands and everything. Oh, they're like Scientology, Ooh. Asylum Ooh. Films LLC. Oh, speaking of sexual harassment and Scientology, watch out that '70s show. Hmm. Oh God! Yeah, that's something, that's something else you can't like anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I saw like I saw a fucking what's the name? Uh, Kelso. <laughs> Is that was the character's name? Hi, like an article Kutcher? just his face, and it's like Danny Masterson <laughs> arrested for raping three people. I was like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> and Scientology's been hiding that shit. Mm-hmm. So I guess I guess when we post this this uh this uh podcast up, it'll be Alien vs Predator slash the sexual harassment episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're handling some deep dark topics today. Yeah. Well, I think it's b- beyond harassment, the sexual assault episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. Ugh. Oh God. Anyway, back to this yeah. eye rape of a movie. Yeah. All right. Can I do and, my thing? Can yeah, I do your thing. Ahead. All right. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like I've got a pretty broad definition of what art is. Like, <laughs> like anything with a, like creative value, something with a style or substance, ideally both. This is not art. <laughs> like the thing no. is like a creativity black hole. It's it, like even... The, even the fucking title is just two other better movies titles just mashed together without yep. any thought to how they relate to the content of the movie. Nope. Like, I don't there think was, a single creative decision was made during the entire production of this. There <laughs> wasn't a drop of artistic passion in any of this. Not a single frame. The fact that it even has cover art is offensive to me. Like, it should literally just be sold in a blank DVD case with movie written on it in Sharpie. Yeah. Like even calling it movie feels kind of dishonest. Like it's only a yeah. movie in the most dry the clinical sense. Like it's got a script and some actors and it was recorded to for people to watch. <laughs> but yeah. like it's like the red lobster of movies. Yeah. It's like, sure, it's a restaurant. <laughs> There's no good reason to go there and it may end up blowing your asshole out. <laughs> I'm never gonna live this down. <laughs> Because nobody goes there, Chase. <laughs> Fucking psychopath. <laughs> You're I mean, from uh, Louisiana. I'm not in Louisiana now. <laughs> and speaking of which, you know what? Now I am going to go on a rant. Because <laughs> you go to Red Lobster. That was one strike against your Cajun card. And then I was going back listening to an old episode. And we were talking about K.K. Slider songs. And you called it Zydeco. It's Zydeco, you fucking uncultured asshole. <laughs> and you should know these things. You got one more strike, buddy, and you're gonna be full blown fucking Texas boy. No more, no more Cajun for you. Sweet Jesus. I will. To, in Chase's defense, I do remember like coming into his room in college one time, and he was just listening to Zydeco music. Like that's just, fine. L- just listening to it. That's fine back then. But if that be happened now, he'd be culturally appropriating it because he was very far removed from it at this point. Jesus Christ. Now, there's oh, my not, rant. Not to, you know, speak against my own cause here, but I have lived outside of Louisiana more than I have in it at this point in my life. Well, you're not helping your case, buddy. I know. <sighs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> Alien, we haven't even started the movie yet. Alien <laughs> <laughs> we haven't started the movie and we're we're angry at each other already. Yeah. But I, I, don't I, worry, I, listeners. There's fucking no content in this movie, so uh, yeah. <laughs> that whole thing was way more interesting than anything that happens on screen. I'm I'm gonna totally blow my my say something nice at the end of this thing, which I don't know how we're gonna do. But 
my whole thing that my, my say something nice as half-assed as it could possibly be was that there was some accidental points when I would pause the movie to write to take down a note the composition of the paused screen was kind of nice and it was totally accidental <laughs> yeah I think like there was a couple of times where there you know during one of the hours that they're wandering through the forest um where like I thought the lighting was pretty nice but I think it was just natural lighting and it was a pure yeah. accident oh, yeah. they, they hadn't gotten to an interior set where it was uh lit by Spencer Gifts <laughs> I, I was saving this <laughs> But when they get in the spaceship, one of two things happen. They either went into a laser tag arena, yeah. or <laughs> somehow they found the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids Ray and went into a gaming PC. One of those yeah. two things happened. <laughs> it's just rainbow strobe lights everywhere. Yeah, it was... <sighs> but I digress. Speaking of wet dreams, it was a PC Master Race wet dream. Yeah. <laughs> but I, nothing but RGB and fans everywhere. I digress though because that doesn't happen until five hours into this hour and a half long movie. <laughs> yeah, we're nowhere close. We haven't even gotten to the title card yet. So, so yeah, okay, diving in. Here we go. <laughs> get ready to get angry. So, we open up to an alien ship that looks totally there crashing into a facility that also looks totally there and we get the the standard asylum brand fly over some trees with the credit stick that they do in every single fucking movie why do they do that because they have no ideas maybe they just have a bunch of fucking footage of just flying through trees and they're like well gotta use it it's the same thing with christmas uh, miracle we got a drone we gotta use it yep yep so, uh, an elite team of commandos deploy into the jungle, uh, and the, the, the radio guy at HQ radios in uh, for the SEAL team. Uh, they, they clear the, the quote-unquote perimeter, which is the immediate area they're standing in. They just kind of swivel their heads. Yeah, perimeter's clear. We're good. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they radio into HQ and say they have visual on the impact site, and I'm already motion sick. Oh, even hmm. the tight close-ups of actors' faces are filmed by a cameraman doing jumping jacks. It's it's insane. It's Everything's insane. Fl- <sighs> this guy they move- thinks he's Paul Greengrass over here. <laughs> the hell, who the hell? They is move Paul forward. Oh, come on, <laughs> that's around a movie podcast. I don't know who that is. <laughs> he directed uh, two of the, the three Bourne movies. The second of which I could barely watch. I think those movies are awesome. I haven't watched a single Bourne movie. The first one's fine because it's directed by a different guy, but <laughs> the second one is like, I mean, it's uh, it's like you can't tell what's happening in any any action scene. Irregardless. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, you can't tell what's happening in any scene here, but good news for you, there isn't anything happening in any of these scenes. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> They move forward towards their objective, and one of them's already wounded? They haven't even done anything. He's got a bandage around his arm that's bleeding. Yeah, I was, I was wondering like, about that myself. <laughs> got caught on a thorn? <laughs> Probably. They, they go Nothing radio quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the door jam got me on the way out. <laughs> Uh, so they go radio silent as they approach their target when gunfire erupts and purple laser beams start flying everywhere and they're getting picked off. They call in for backup. However, the guy at HQ seems only capable of saying, I read you over. <laughs> the last of the squad gets gunned down and back at HQ, they call in uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Adrian, who looks like Dwayne the Rock Johnson and Idris Elba did the fusion dance. I was just going to call him the Pebble, because <laughs> he is not the Rock. Well, I went with the whole Dragon Ball thing, and I gave him a Dragon Ball Fusion name. He's Rock Elbow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I referred to him as throughout the entirety of this movie. I so, think you already called this dude the Pebble in Atlantic Rim 2. The same guy? Same guy. Well, then that's that would why. be why I called him the Pebble. <laughs> that makes <Okay>. sense. <laughs> 
If I'm if I'm anything, I'm consistent. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm John. I'm surprised you remember anything from Atlantic Rim Two because I cannot remember a frame of that movie. Dude, I if you put a gun in my head right now and said, "Tell me one thing about Atlantic Rim 2, I'd be like, "That's a damn good question." And then you have to <laughs> shoot me in the face because <laughs> that was one. Like, That's from Atlantic Rim One. <laughs> <laughs> so. They bring him up to speed, and he says, it's going to be a long day. Long day. With all the passion of a wet paper bag, this guy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so I don't understand. So, like, the there's a SEAL team doing a black op, and <laughs> the only person watching, observing this, is this one dumb guy. <laughs> Some sweaty guy in a tank top. <laughs> and, like, yeah. literally no one else knows about what's happened. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, it's these on, things it's are, on are you. well planned out. They're not just done on a whim. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again. We desperately need a military contact that we can bounce all this shit off of. Because this Dude, movie was rife with things. That I have, I, I, I have <laughs> multiple people that I could talk to. And when you told me that this time, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to get in touch with them. And I didn't. So, sorry. <laughs> I mean, honestly... I even got, I got I got a special forces guy I could talk to. No problem. We but need him. I, we do. I just some I'm of his afraid. insight would be would be interesting for sure. Yeah, but I don't want to. Like, I don't want to be the guy to ask him a stupid fucking question though. You're not asking this. Like you're you're conveying stupidity from these movies to him, so we can. You're you're double checking. You're doing your due diligence here. Yeah, it, it, like I know you did all kind of badass shit and everything, but let me let me tell you about this stupid movie. <laughs> <laughs> we need that thanks for fighting so I could sit back and watch these dumb fucking movies and all but can you tell me if this formation is correct <laughs> but like that's can you the tell thing me like, if it, it's... Doesn't, it doesn't matter though I mean I bet I bet like a you know a seal could watch uh, Predator and have all kinds of shit to say about what they're doing wrong but that movie still yeah. rules like, I'm, just giving, yeah. I'm just giving an excuse for my laziness they really wouldn't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> No, but they would just... give a fuck, and I don't think, like, I, it just seems kind of, it seems pedantic to go after, uh, minute, like, you know, stuff like that, like, well, actually, like, in an asylum movie, you know, who fucking yeah. cares? It's like, it's just boring <laughs> crap. Yeah, you me. know good and well, it's never just the radio guy overseeing an op. Well, we don't need a military guy to tell you that, uh that Cap's gun, that wasn't a scope, that was a fucking security camera on the top of his gun. <laughs> They're all wearing gaming headsets? Yes. Uh. Like, it was, dude, I had to, like, rewind it. He had one of the old tube-style security cameras just gaffed and taped on it. Yes. And, that, and that's why it had the little intermittent red light. <laughs> <laughs> and they are just wearing those, like, um... Those little head flashlights, uh, yeah, on all the time for no reason. <laughs> no reason, only to uh, give away their position. But we're getting <laughs> way far ahead. It's insane. Br Brooks's magic uh, goggles were just like a Google cardboard, right? <laughs> and, yeah. Yes, yes, and he never used them. <sighs> oh. Okay. Oh, man. Man. We're, we're what barely past the opening credits. <laughs> so, uh, so he, uh, uh, Rock Elbow goes to his commanding officer and pushes the scent of chopper to go and find any survivors of the team that just got wiped out. And the commander goes on and on about how they can't do that because of the politics behind it, and we're not legally allowed to be any closer to enemy lines. Okay, hold up. We're, we're talking about an alien invasion here, and we've got to sift through all this red tape. Do we already have long-lasting diplomatic relations with these aliens? They don't know that it's aliens, Chase. They think it's insane. We know that now. Not right here. They don't know that it's aliens. Well, we, I didn't know that they didn't know it was aliens. They didn't know. What enemy are they talking about? Where even is this? They told you. Well, <laughs> I should use that as a question. Because, yeah, actually, when they're going over the base, they say it's, I forget what, what South American country they said. Honduras. Yeah. So they yeah. say that, like, where at, like, what, what, where at in Honduras, and then it shows the base, and it says undisclosed location. You just disclose the location. <laughs> okay. 
A craft, an unknown craft goes down in Honduras. Why are we there? The food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, nothing. No good reason. <laughs> I'm just like, I didn't know we were at war with Honduras. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, Raquelbo says... That he only needs five to seven men to go in and search. And the commander pushes that there's already a second patrol set to go in in a few hours. And that's when they'll deal with the missing team. And they salute each other tensely. And Rock Elbow heads out. Uh, he starts putting together the team anyway. And they meet up in a tent later. He lays out the situation to the ragtag group. Uh, that the SEAL team went dark, and they're not going to go and search for them anytime soon. Well, by the time you get this squad assembled and briefed, the rescue team will be out there already. And they make a point to say that the team that's coming is another SEAL team. And that yeah. he says what you have is a bunch of enlisted men, basically saying they're all worth nothing for some reason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which I didn't agree with. Uh, but the thing that bothered me the most during this these couple scenes is... I thought, is he going to be chewing that gum through the whole fucking movie? Mm-hmm. And he 100%. was. 100%. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's that's his character tick. It's a choice. <sighs> so he, sa- he says that, you know, uh, Hobbs, Hobbs, his friend in the other team, his life support monitor is still picking up a heartbeat, so they can't just leave him out there. Uh, one of the crew questions if they can pull this off is there a team that's uh, assembled of non-special ops people and they're not even part of the same unit and one of these guys must be part dragon because he's had smoke billing out of his nose every second he's on screen (laughs) (laughs) he's just blasting smoke out of his nose Uh, they all know uh, that they're the only hope for the SEAL team so they all agree to go AWOL and do this secret uh, mission Seconds later, fully geared, they come out of the level 8 warp pipe in the middle of the woods. What the fuck was that about? <laughs> and it's... Okay, and again, this is not a jungle. No, this is like behind my house. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just this the woods. This is the same like... area. Everybody had this area in their neighborhood where everybody picked up a stick and said it was a rifle and you went and played fucking Predator. <laughs> They're in the mm-hmm. same spot. That's where that is. So they walk through the woods and they all banter about the female soldiers' cycles and low T levels, and it's just as cringy as possible. They go through all their names, but I don't really give a shit. And all uh, their face paint is way too shiny. I was okay, I was gonna make a point of this. The the, the face paint. The camo face paint serves a purpose, correct? It's to yes. flatten your face. Not yes. to make you look cool or like Darth Maul or some shit. No, they made, tried to make themselves look cool, <laughs> and it was, but it was too shiny. It's supposed to be I have a matte finish so it doesn't stand yeah. out in the fucking quote-unquote jungle, and, but they failed on every aspect of it. Yeah, you're supposed to put darks on the parts of your face that stand out and lights on the parts that are shallow to make your face a flat surface so that you can't be seen. And I don't know what Alvarez was trying to do with hers, but it was like the OD green version of, of Bender when he hasn't had enough to drink and he's got the little rust beard. Like, that's exactly what she looked like. <laughs> she just put a five o'clock shadow on her. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I had a problem with the face paint. It was like, the this face isn't. Paint was crazy. It was crazy. This isn't like Norse war paint. It's, <laughs> it's supposed to serve a purpose. So, yeah, they go through the names. Uh, the tech guy they're bringing along from HQ has no weapon. That doesn't happen, right? No. Whatever profession you're in in the military, if you're out in the field, you have a gun. Unless you're you Hacksaw Ridge in it or whatever, but I don't think <laughs> any of them were uh, yeah. conscientious observers. Yeah. You're a rifleman first and a whatever the fuck second. You learned this in Saving Private Ryan. Not to mention, you're going save a team that was ambushed. You're going <laughs> to need a gun. Yeah. Yeah, but he's anyway. like weird, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah, get to the whole. Oh, oh. out or whatever. Yeah, we'll get into that. So they're they're giving uh, Brooks a hard time, including the Dragon Man Scarloff. <laughs> <laughs> he's not he's not a dragon. He's a warlock or something. Uh, 
they talk about how Brooks has random anxiety attacks, and I'm sure these are going to play a major role in this ship pile room of a movie, or they're not going to happen at all. I wouldn't be surprised either way. It's Asylum we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, Rock Elbow talks about how their first priority is finding the missing SEAL team, then figuring out just what kind of craft crashed in the first place. Uh, they find some glop on the ground, and Brooks analyzes it with his game gear, and it tells him nothing because the batteries died before he can even boot up Sonic the Hedgehog. So they move on. Uh, they, they hear something and get all riled up, but it's only a snake. Or is it? Laser beams come flying out of everywhere. It blows up one of the soldiers. Uh, he looks down at his hand to see that it's been blown off, but the stump's quadrupled in size, almost to the size of a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like he was just holding a fistful of beef. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well have been. That's how much they cared. Uh, they all take cover, but no one can see where the shots are coming from, and they use that old military slang, bupkis. <laughs> You know, we're just going to start throwing out that Yiddish in, <laughs> in the military <laughs> slang. This guy was training his wheel, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing it was your hand and not your schmeckle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't say foobar. They say the whole thing's Meshuggah. <laughs> okay, beer just came off my nose. <laughs> 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 Oh good. my god! Uh, Just real quick on the on the dialogue, they must have had a dictionary of of every like cliche military phrase you've ever heard. Oh yeah, they're just it's spitting like, them stay out. Frosty, keep your head on a swivel. Like yeah. it's just well, all this yeah. shit. It's everything's when five by the, five. When you go into the asylum writing room, there's a, a whiteboard that just has the, all those terms just in, in permanent marker on it. Like you can never erase those. You gotta always have those on here. <laughs> so, question: How do they not know where the fire is coming from when they're visible laser beams? Yes, <laughs> it's like they didn't know they were going to put laser beams in in post. It's almost, almost. It's also almost like they were never trained in combat. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Even though the soldier that got hit is still alive, they opt to just leave his ass there to die. So they start moving slowly away out of cover. Wait, that did uh, piss me off. <laughs> no. Hold on. Fantastic. So the guy gets shot. And before they even went on a mission, he talked about how, you know, this isn't, you know, it's, you don't have to go because we're, at, we're doing what we're not supposed to do. We're going AWOL to do yeah. all these things and all that. Well, they shoot the guy, and the guy in charge, Rock Elbow or whatever, just like, eh. <laughs> just <laughs> it's a man. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. We gotta keep going. But you would have figured, you know, it's, it's like, man, you didn't even have to come, or, he, like, you'd want to take care of the guy because he volunteered his life when yeah. he didn't have to. But, eh, gotta keep moving. Yeah. In Predator, sure. when, in Predator, when what's his name? Uh, I can't remember his name. The skinny guy. When he gets clocked in the chest by that trap and gets his ribs crushed, he still huffs it along with him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't leave him there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just figured, you know, whenever you're on a volunteer mission, you'd give a little more, you know, help to the people that are didn't have to be there, but they're there anyway. A good leader well, would take note of that. This gum-chewing <laughs> asshole couldn't give a shit. Well, this movie is only half Predator, so. True. I was very. I kept getting mad that there was nothing in between Alien and Predator. Like, I know it can't be Alien versus Predator, but at least put a hyphen or a slash or something. <laughs> a slash. <laughs> <laughs> and, and put a put an ampersand in there. Put put a uh, uh, an an at symbol in there. Whatever, something. Like it's a <laughs> like it's an email address or something. Put it in parentheses. Just do something. <laughs> <sighs> so. They start moving slowly out of cover towards where the lasers were coming from. They only get a few feet away, and Skarloff stops everybody and says, I gotta go back for him, and you can see him in the background. 
And they get into a huge argument. And Book says that he's dead because he's still standing with him because they've only moved a few feet away. And this whole scene is very shoddily put together. I got to go back for him. You see him in the background. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. You guys are good. I'm only like 10 feet from base. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just drag my ass back to the pipe. I'll be fine. So they reach the building and they see the alien ship start to light up. And Brooks tells them that the ship is definitely foreign. Thanks. Yeah. No shit. They move in. They find some more glop on the ground and spot a foreign soldier tied up to a tree by what appears to be entrails, I guess. It's just muck. This uh, was. Uh, I couldn't tell. If it was supposed to be like parts of his body or if it was something else wrapped around him, it was very shit. It was en- done. It was enough to make up three more people. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't think like it was, it was like a big foam pad like around his body. Right. Oh that that's what it was. <laughs> I was well I know, but say. well they didn't hide it very well. Yeah, they didn't even try. <laughs> it was like garbage. I mean it's one of the worst effects in the movie. So he wakes up. And he starts screaming at him, and uh, much to the chagrin of uh, Skarloff, who says that he's given away a position. Uh, they've all been giving away their positions for the last, you know, <laughs> half yeah. an hour, but whatever. They're talking to each other in full blast, yelling out to the people in the back. <laughs> so, right. Uh, uh, the, he says that there, that there are alien soldiers by the building, and they bring up... Uh, private plant or no that's not this, this is Malloy I don't know it's one of the assholes they bring him up catch he, their names yeah he can speak Spanish so they get him to talk to him and he tells them that the aliens already know that they're there and he tells them that they're gonna find their death here so uh, they shoot the man in the head because he's given away they're already given away position they keep moving forward and they find what Malloy describes as a tech ball in a pile of glop right. he pick he picks it up and it starts to glow purple and fuses into his hand and it, the glow makes its way into his chest and it explodes out of his chest. And as the team is shaken up, purple lasers start blasting in from everywhere again. Again, they claim they can't see where it's coming from. Uh, the squad regroups and they tell the commander what happened to Malloy <laughs> in, the, in, more, in more very specific military vernacular. It went bloop, then kablooey. <laughs> what a great way to describe one of your close friend's death. Kablooey. I want that on my tombstone. It went bloop, then kablooey. <laughs> and I couldn't help but think, you know, at this point, any trained military person would say, you know, we should probably fall back and wait for the seals to come. <laughs> <laughs> we've lost two people just by walking we didn't even do anything yet <laughs> we're about to lose another one because that nail scratch is getting infected on that dude's arm <sighs> so plant says that they should call in an airstrike and nuke the site from orbit uh, rock elbow says that they can't do that because they're not supposed to be out there in the first place and only the people the only people that are coming is that says that second schedule team who at this point are probably further than these assholes because they've only covered about 12 feet this whole time not to mention if they encounter them out in the out in the shit as they say they're going to get shot yeah because the seals <laughs> don't know they're out there. there so they decide to circle around to the rear of the building where the ship crashed and hope for a blind spot to approach uh, so they'll get there next week at some point He gives the order to kill these sons of bitches without ever seeing who the enemy is or having any intel at all. (laughs) They trek around the building as Rock Elbow questions Brooks about anything that he may have heard in R&D close to that death marble that killed Malloy. And Brooks says only a handful of other countries could have had the capabilities to make something like that and proceeds to ramble off pretty much every major nation on the globe. Yes. (laughs) So... (laughs) But he rules out Israel. I thought, he said, I thought about putting that as a question, but I was like, all they'd have to do is name, like, one major country, and they're going to get it. <laughs> he named everything. It was like that that Animaniacs episode. He just yeah. did them all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was like, even Guatemala has it. 
<laughs> so he rules out Israel and says that it's more than likely Russia. And Raquel Bo, uh, questions the logic behind all that. So why are you asking, asshole? Yeah. You're asking for my expertise. I gave it to you, and it's not good enough. So he pivots to, once again, trying to make Brooks feel like he's needed on this mission. And Brooks lets off all the gear that he has, which I guess is all folded up in his magic backpack. Yeah, He says he has, like, every known... <laughs> He says he's got every explosive known to man in that thing. Yeah. So, more trudging through the woods, they scope out the wreck and figure out that this is the best angle of approach. Uh, Dude, it the happens- trudging. <laughs> the, like, honestly, we're, we're 40 minutes into the movie at this point. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. everything else has been trudging. It's like, what are we doing today, director? Uh, just walking around holding guns. Yeah. Uh, yep. For the whole day? A uh, whole day. We got a lot of time for that. We have literally no story, and this thing has to be at least 80 minutes. Yep. And make sure y'all get all those smoke machines running, because we know <laughs> Holy that. Holy shit. There's what the smoke. hell was all that about? <laughs> smoke coming out of everywhere, just out of the grass. <laughs> it's atmosphere. I, I, was, I was thinking, I was like, is he going for, like, literal fog of war? Or what? What's going on? <laughs> Uh, oh that's God. a big it's red sharpie on that whiteboard. <laughs> oh, uh, <sighs> they scope out the wreck and they figure out that this is their best angle of approach. It also it also happens to be the exact spot the previous team got taken out. These so, teams suck. <laughs> clearly the best option. Uh, they question why there's no bodies left around before moving in. Uh, Brooks finds a green smudge on a rock and brings everything to a halt. He says that this isn't the local language. Really? That's not Spanish, asshole? (laughs) (laughs) I forgot that it would have been Spanish. (laughs) (laughs) He says this isn't the local language. He says it may be a warning of some sort. And he uses his magic goggles that he apparently doesn't have to take the cover off of to use. And uh, he sees that there's traces of blood that's been wiped clean everywhere. And they find more glop. And he says that there's green energy distortions all over it when he looks at it through the UV light. So Raquel Bo tells Scarloff to hold this point. And if the rest of the team doesn't return in two hours, everyone together, he's to get to the chopper. Aye. <laughs> so the team approaches the facility that has this small western town built around it. It's clearly the remains of a western set that they shot in that location a couple hours ago. There's a fucking wagon wheels and carts and shit. (laughs) Gotta check the old mine. (laughs) (laughs) So, they enter a cave beneath this building that must obviously lead directly into the building. What Why the wouldn't hell? it? It's when a it cave. Happened? Like, when all this, I was like, what happened to the movie? <laughs> 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 they went from what was supposed to be a jungle to a fucking ghost town and then to a <laughs> subterranean entrance to a fucking office building? What the hell's going on? (laughs) Oh, Lord. So they go into the cave, and the cave door warps closed, and they're trapped. It just just materializes a rock. And uh, Skarlov comes under attack and starts spraying bullets everywhere before being blasted apart by a laser. Well, first they talk to him, and they want to know what happened to the door. And he was like... First it was there, and then it's just not there. And then they show a shot of it, and you can clearly still see it there. It just has dirt over it. So yeah. it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> but also the, the abruptness from where he goes from being bewildered by the cave to just... It's one cut. He's like, I don't know where it went. They're everywhere! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> just full auto on this machine gun. <laughs> Then we uh, find out so, later there's only three of them, so how could they be everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to point that out later, too. But uh, plant, uh, private plant, I don't know what their actual... I know that it, he, it I know his name's plant. I don't know what he is. It doesn't matter. Uh, Believe me, none of it's questions. He, he, <laughs> he tries to shoot his way out of the cave rock, oh, which God. just gets one of the other men hit by the ricochet. 
Uh, did they shoot this scene first and then forget continuity and say, well, he needs a bandage on his arm. He got shot in the cave. It's possible. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just wondering why you're going to shoot dirt to try to get out of a cave. So, uh, Brooks is starting to look green around the gills. I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe he's going to have one of his signature breakdowns. Nah. Uh, I'm just thinking maybe they should have waited for the seals. <laughs> <laughs> Because like this a bunch of idiots it didn't getting the job done at all. Yeah, this is like if we went in. Yeah. <laughs> one yeah. of us would accidentally shoot the other one. Yes, that is exactly <laughs> what would happen. Big ass oh. motherfuckers. These guys are not. <laughs> <laughs> so, Raquel Bo tells them to press on as they move through the cave. Uh, they approach a room that's flashing purple. So they all turn on all kinds of lights and lasers and headlamps that make no sense and no aren't really rhyme needed. No reason, no consistency. <laughs> Everybody's got a different fucking thing going. <laughs> like well, one yeah. guy, one guy at the tip of his gun, he's got one of them UV flashlights that you fucking see the sperm in hotel rooms. <laughs> Those goddamn sperm lights. You yeah. never know when you need the sperm light. <laughs> well, he had it. He's like, there's alien jizz all over this place. Uh, oh. These guys also all have completely different weapons. Like, none of them have the same mm -hmm. weapon. There's there's a standard issue, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, which none of them have a standard issue anything. It's all fucking grenade launchers. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's totally bonkers. It's, it's whatever... <laughs> stock prop guns they found in a pile in a room yeah. that some other more successful studio didn't need anymore. Yeah, and the, the couple rifles they did have were augmented with so much stupid fucking accessories on it. Like a security camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, they turn on all their shit. The cave turns into Freddy Krueger's boiler room. And uh, Brooke says that uh, this room is bigger than it should be. And it should be outside of this cave structure. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Uh, I don't know. They, they enter another room uh, that's all strobe lights. And like I said, they just raided a party store for their lighting for the whole movie. Uh, they find vegetation growing inside the cave. This makes no sense at all. It's literally impossible to grow plants inside. Especially ones made of plastic. Yeah. <laughs> like, who put all these store-bought potted plastic plants just jutting out diagonally from under staircases and around corners? So... Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> they find a path blocked by a piece of the ship that's just jutting through the building. And they gotta find another way around. Which, so the okay, the, the ship is on the roof. Why are they finding parts of the ship underground why why anything why is there a cave yeah. under this building that's part of the building okay what? so it's an underground cave under an office building where there's an alien ship on the roof but there's an entrance to it underground it yes <laughs> that's all i have to say I, yeah, yes. yeah, I, know, I, am, I have no answers at this point it's just yeah you have to buy into it well, that's one is. thing that I don't think these slippery bastards are getting out of. I think we finally fucking got them on that one. <laughs> Nailed them. <laughs> so, they gotta find another way around. They split up. Uh, Brooks finds some kind of green tube going into a furnace, and he assumes, well, this is what's powering the building still. Well, so some kind obviously. Of so many LED strips in this fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I thought there were Christmas lights at some points, but... Very well, must have been. They must have raided yeah. those uh, Atlantic Rim cockpits. <laughs> <laughs> more slow walking until Brooks finds some more green energy signals everywhere. When uh, Falk uh, starts coughing and convulsing, she vomits blood up and dies. So the sergeant orders them to move on, and Brooks freaks out saying, We can't just leave her here. She's dead. They left poor old Malloy, and he was alive. <laughs> yeah, Brooks was literally all about leaving that dude, and now he <laughs> doesn't want to leave this girl. 
Well, there's a key difference. The I'm movies. not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get caught up in the same shit that everybody else is getting caught up in, but there's a difference. <laughs> So, she died for no reason. Yeah, she just dies. And no one ever explains anything. They're not like, the atmosphere is not safe to breathe in here or anything. Nothing. I, I guess because she touched the stuff. <laughs> like, that's the only thing that happened. I thought maybe there was, there was like, I didn't, like, there was a trap and I didn't see it because, again, not to jump ahead, but it happens again later. Uh, I'm not going to say which character, but one, they're running through a hallway and something, like, springs up and pops them in the neck. Well, he, oh, yeah. She touched some stuff that was on the fence and then she died. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the, <laughs> a, a straighter connection I can't think of, so I, it's, I don't know. Uh,. <laughs> I think so, I think maybe she had to go home for dinner or something. <laughs> the street lights came on. God she had to damn go. it! You took it from me. <laughs> <laughs> street lights are coming. I gotta go home. But y'all save this stick because this is a good one. <laughs> She's like, "What's that?" No, you take that stick okay. home and you, you leave it. You take Sorry, that stick guys. home. You Mom's just leave it propped up outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh, the other. The other half of the team, led by Rock Elbow, finds Hobbs laying on the ground. And he's still barely alive, and he How warns did he him that get they there? <laughs> he drug his ass in there. I don't because they found where they were attacked, and that was like five days ago. Yes. <laughs> did he just commando crawl into the to the ghost town through the cave <sighs> into the boiler room? I guess they brought him in there, like like alien. That's the alien part of this. They brought yeah, him into the the boiler left room. Them, just the, left him in there alone. Into the reactor core of this building. Uh, oh god, uh, this know. shit literally makes uh, no fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> Hobbs warns them that they have to get out of there. That they aren't human and they need to run. And then he dies. So, uh, Cap so, and <laughs> LOL, they came all this way. Lost like seven people. The yeah. fucking guy they came to save just dies immediately. Yeah. yeah, the seal that you came to save is telling you, why the fuck are y'all even here? What are you doing? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you need to go. It's it's like in that scene in Saving Private Ryan where they watch Ryan and his team take out that truck full of Germans, and then as Ryan's walking up to him, he steps on a mine. Yeah. <laughs> And then Tom Hanks just goes, fuck! And the movie ends, and it plays the Curb Your Enthusiasm music. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Man, Spielberg's a genius. <laughs> Goddamn right he is. <laughs> so, uh, Rock Elbow and Brooks make their way back when, uh, uh, no, 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 it's not, it's not Rocky, no, it's, uh, it's, Shit, it's another guy. I don't know the name. It's some other dude. Him and Brooks are making their way back when the, the other dude gets a big metal thing thrown into his back. And that's the best I could describe it. It's just shapes of metal. Uh, stabs him in the back. Brooks picks up uh, his... Brooks does have a gun. He's got a, a pistol. He's got a sidearm. He takes it out and he starts shooting. And we finally see one of the aliens slowly plot around the corner shooting lasers. Uh... Brooks it was decides at, it was at this th point I realized that this wasn't so much a ripoff of Predator, but a ripoff of Robo War. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was as soon as I started walking, I was like, why does it sound like a robot? Yeah. yeah and I... then they told us. <laughs> so Brooks decides to go hand to hand with it, because if anyone's gonna go hand to hand with a, an alien, it should be Brooks, the yeah. wormiest guy of the crew. Yeah. Uh he gets knocked to the ground immediately. The alien pulls out a very non-menacing looking blade and raises it up. Brooks throws a flashbang on the ground and it blinds the alien, giving him time to run away. Meanwhile, Rock Elbow pulls out his tape recorder and starts giving specs of the ship, the size and the wingspan. And you can clearly tell all this by being inside of a very small section in the the basement of a building Once looking at a piece the ship of it. is on the roof <laughs> it never penetrated the building because we saw it hit 
Which brings up another question. How does a fucking ship come from space, run into a building, and just kind of sit there? <laughs> Aliens, man. You never know what they can do. <laughs> or can't do. <laughs> so, Brooks makes it back, and he's rambling about the other team all getting killed. A door opens on the ship, and an alien comes out blasting. The team retreats, firing at the alien that has no effect. Well, excuse me. One of the soldiers shouts out, They're surrounding us! They aren't. No, um, just one guy. There's <laughs> just one alien. Uh, directly in front of them, by the way. Uh, Brooks pulls out a block of C4 the size of a to, child. Hold on, hold on, I'm starting to see why that guy in the tent was telling him, Nah, y'all don't need to go do this. Wait for the <laughs> other team. Because <laughs> they morons. really suck at their jobs. Yeah. Brooks pulls out a block of C4 the size of a child and hurls it at the alien, then whips out a grenade launcher that for some reason muzzle flashes as if it's shooting bullets, oh. blowing up the C4. That's not how C4 works. No, and if you had that, why didn't you just shoot the grenade at it, you dumb bastard? Because <laughs> it's apparently not a grenade launcher. <laughs> God damn it. So the C4 God blows up the alien. <laughs> The C4 blows up the aliens, somehow not killing all of them yeah. as it's feet away from them. Yeah, and they're just behind garbage cans. <laughs> <laughs> not even that metal oh. shit that Oscar got. This is the plastic ones. No, they have yeah. like a green plastic garbage can one of them was behind. Yeah. Supplied by the Honduran HOA. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your garden trimmed, asshole. <laughs> so, they inspect the dead alien, but they're quickly attacked by a second one, and they decide to drag the dead alien away with them. Why? To which plants, Plant complains, we left our own people, and you want to bring this dead thing? Thank you. Thank you. There's a reasonable person in this movie. Yeah, exactly. So they drag it away and they drag it into the ship. So this other alien came from somewhere the fuck else. Uh, they start going over the alien body and Rock Elbow just wants to, to push this narrative that it's definitely from a foreign country. It's not an alien. It couldn't be an alien. And then they open up the helmet and they see just an indescribable mess of eyes and spikes that I guess passes for an alien. <laughs> I like how he's like, there's no way it's an alien. It's, it's, it's some other country. They pull off the map. Yep, it's fucking alien. Mm. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you didn't tell me you were just going to take its helmet off, asshole. Come on. <laughs> so, Rock Elbow turns on his tape recorder. And he, he says that this is definitely a warship. And the aliens are wearing some armor made of the same stuff as the ship. How does he know? Says that there's... I, he, I can't know. He couldn't possibly know any of this. No. And 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 again, I hate jumping forward, but guess what? He's wrong. It isn't a warship. Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I promise you, folks. Uh, so Brooke says that there's more green energy everywhere, more useless information. Plant suggests that they take the aliens' weapons, but everyone else is wary about touching their tech because Malloy got killed by that death marble. He got kablooied. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want to get blooped and kablooied, do you? Yeah. <laughs> blooped and kablooied all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so Alvarez goes ahead and picks it up against Rock Elbow's orders. And she says that she just wants to fire one round into the ground to test it. Rock Elbow tells, tells her to stop, but Plant says, nah, screw you, Commander, go ahead and do it. So she pulls the trigger, and the gun starts to glow purple and causes her to catch on fire in the most <laughs> realistic way possible. <laughs> <laughs> this shit got me laughing. It was like just her, just her face caught on fire. Like, why, didn't her, why didn't her clothes catch on fire? Was, why didn't she like, even catch on fire? <laughs> well, it glowed. It is, this is really this is really specific, but it's like any time in the old Space Ghost Coast to Coast when something caught on fire, it was that same little yes. gif of a of a of a campfire put on top of somebody. Exactly. Yeah. 
So her head bursts into flames and it turns her into the red skull and she flops on the ground and she's just kind of like eyeballing everybody with this skull head. <laughs> so Rock Elbow, grab, Rock Elbow grabs Plant and slams him against the wall and blames him for this. Uh, so they decide to, you know, you, you know what? Let's go ahead and call it and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so they start charging through the ship. Another alien cuts Brooks off from the rest of the team, which is just Rock Elbow and Plant at this point. Uh, Brooks finds a room with some more strange, some strange stones stacked up on what's clearly an IKEA bookshelf. Yes, I have three of these in my home. <laughs> so uh, he he takes some pictures of it with his phone. Uh, Rock Elbow and Plant search for a way out. In the meantime. But Brooks finds another room with human heads and other strange specimens in jars and in, in acrylic boxes. And it's he almost takes, like uh, it's so- taking trophies. Mm. Uh. <laughs> so he takes some blue glowing thing out of a box with a rag and takes it with him. Uh, an alien follows close behind him and he notices one of the little blue devices is missing. So uh, Brooks hides behind like some rack and the alien walks right up to him and is looking dead at him. Yeah. And doesn't seem to see him. So Brooks takes out his phone and point blank takes a picture of the alien's face and the flash blinds it so he can run away. Yeah. Stupid. The only thing that was missing whenever he flashed the thing was the alien go fire bad. <laughs> So, Brooks stumbles upon the navigation room where he sees a map where the alien ship went off course and crashed in the Milky Way galaxy. And by how complicated this map is, I guess all the aliens are five years old. Because <laughs> it's a planet, and then the Milky Way, and then another planet, and there's a line between them, and then a little red line going to the, other, to the Milky Way galaxy. <laughs> the planet they meant to go to has a thumbs up by it. This planet has a, a thumbs down. <laughs> a little, it's got a little sad face. Let's get the little poop emoji next to it. <laughs> what was the movie we watched where it was like the 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 people with the the they're aliens, but they're like worked on a junk ship or something? Morons from outer space. Yeah, that's what these people are. <laughs> uh so. Brooks runs into the other two and he shows them the pictures he took. Uh, they figure out that they can use light to disorient the aliens. Uh, Brooks says that he took some more of the explosion marbles that he found in that room and he could use them against the aliens. Can you? You've only killed yourselves with their things so far. No. Uh, Every, everybody knows aliens are impervious to being blooped. <laughs> bloop proof. Yeah. And if they don't bloop, they don't come bluey, so... <laughs> You can't go blue if you don't bloop. I'm sorry. That's just yeah, solid exactly. science. I mean, it's fucking physics. Jesus. <laughs> so, it's we need a physician. <laughs> 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 so, uh, Plant isn't down with this plan at all. He just wants to go all out assault on these aliens. So, an alien shows up and immediately kills Plant. <laughs> They throw a flash bomb and stun the alien and open fire. The alien is unaffected by the bullets and it, it grabs Brooks and tosses him aside. Can we it talk about the flash ro- bombs, please? Okay. Y'all know what yes, these they're, things they're, are? They're, they're the little flash things that Red Lobster gives you. Let's just get it out of the fucking way, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> they're, no, they're, it's, it's a little more than that. It, they, yeah, they're little... Uh... They're for like road hazards, like you, your little road hazard kit that you got when you got to change a tire. You put them things out behind your car and it flashes red so people can see. That's all them things are. Well, it, it's what they had on them when they made the movie. <laughs> Military grade equipment. <laughs> I just, you know, try to disguise it a little bit. Yeah. So why do they the call alien it a flash clip- bomb. It's a, it's a, it's a light. It, it flashed. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, the alien closes in with Rock Elbow, so they set off another flash bomb. Uh, he grabs Brooks and pulls him to safety as they both fall back. 
then this is where, running through the hallway, Rock Elbow gets hit in the neck by some kind of projectile out of nowhere. So I, I figured there were booby traps around, and they tripped one, and he got hit in the neck by something. Honestly, he starts I, don't, coughing. I don't think they put that much thought into it. I think, I I think don't they know. just needed him to get injured. Yeah. Yeah. He, he grabs his neck, and he's coughing up blood. And so Brooks is sitting there with him, and Rock Elbow tells Brooks that he's going to sacrifice himself to give Brooks time to escape. And he gives Brooks his tape recorder. He says, bring this to HQ. And it, it, somebody give this guy the un-Oscar. We talked about giving that woman from Karate <laughs> Christmas because his death performance is brilliant. <laughs> it's so hammy. I, like, for the most part, he's been just like a cool-headed kind of you know, kind of character. He's barely been acting. <laughs> yeah, but it, I don't know. He delivers his lines all right, I guess. But like here, he went for it. <laughs> this is this is where his time to shine. And he fucked it all up. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so Brooks leaves Rock Elbow in a heap on the ground, bleeding profusely from his neck. Cut. The next scene. The alien's standing there, and Rock Elbow comes around the corner. He looks perfectly fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the steel cage. Yeah, he's going steel cage with this alien after he was about to die. The, the alien grabs him, slams him into a wall, and raises its weapon, and blasts a hole through Rock Elbow's stomach and walks away. Very I mean, oh, spectacular, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> So, meanwhile, Brooks finds a dead alien and a dead end. Uh, he hears another one approaching behind him, and he uses the dead alien's hand to activate the door and open it. He finds his way back to where they started by following, following the trail of his dead friend's bodies. Uh, <laughs> he starts planting C4 charges on the, the furnaces, and he sinks it with a detonator. He finds his way back to the cave uh, with an alien in close pursuit. He dumps all the death marbles on the ground like he's Kevin McAllister in Home Alone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he takes cover behind a rock and he pulls out his quote-unquote grenade launcher and waits for the alien to step into view. He detonates the C4, blowing up the, the ship. Not really blowing up the ship. He just blows up the, the boiler room of this office building. He blows and... up the boiler room of the cave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why didn't he blow it up when the alien was walking by? I don't... Mm, that cave's not going to have hot water for months. No, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> Gotta get a guy out here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the alien recoils back from the explosion. He tosses out a flash bomb and opens fire with his now actually a grenade launcher. Right. Uh, the alien shoots some uh, bullshit at him and it knocks the... the grenade launcher out of his hands and so they, they, <laughs> the alien decides to have an honorable fight by dropping his gun they're gonna predator the shit out of this last scene not really predator though. two the shit out of it this last scene uh they both find out hand that they, they both realize their mother's name is Martha and they call it quits oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> would have been a better ending uh, <laughs> so Brooks goes hand to hand and he, he gets the alien in a chokehold only to realize that the alien doesn't need to breathe. He gets knocked to the ground and, okay, questions here. Does he use his malfunctioning earpiece to electrocute the alien? I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah, I, I honestly don't. Because it certainly no looked idea. like that. I mean, your guess is as good as he mine. He gets knocked to the ground it looked like a piece of equipment on his shoulder or his ear was sparking. So he grabbed it, and it's, it certainly looked like the earpiece of an, uh, of an Xbox 360. And he just held it out and touched the alien with it, and it electrocuted the piss out of the alien. Hey, who the fuck knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He needed a way for this wormy Dog bastard shit. to beat this alien. Well, you know, what's uh, weird is uh, he dumped those explody balls all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Never used them. Nope, not a bloop to be found. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not a Back to my original bloop. statement. Back to my original statement. They cannot use their tech. So. It looked like he had a plan. 
That should, that's, that's every Asylum movie. It looked like they had a plan. <laughs> when is Asylum going to fucking hire us as consultants, for Christ's sake? Because, look, I may not make a shitty movie like this, but at least it'll make sense. They don't want that. I think we they can make care. more fun. They don't care. Movies. Yeah, exactly. They just they... need to make sure that they get this Russian drug lord's money from here to there. <laughs> Let's just call him Ivan. They're always doing shit for Ivan. <laughs> you make movie. Oh. <laughs> you don't make oh. movie, I feed the you the bear. <laughs> <laughs> so Brooke stands over the alien's body when another one appears in the doorway. And uh, it slowly approaches Brooks, who readies himself in a karate stance. But the alien just reaches out his hand and touches Brooks' fist. And it gets all uh, Independence Day when Brooks gets flashes of the alien's memories. And uh. he realizes that the aliens accidentally crashed here. And they just wanted to fix their ship and go home. So they put up warning signs around the wreck for others to stay away. But we drew first blood by attacking them first. But we didn't. Yeah, we literally <laughs> didn't. <laughs> They just ambushed a bunch of people all the time, unprovoked. <laughs> yeah, the so seals didn't Brooke fire seen... first. No. <laughs> unless, uh, <laughs> unless they didn't release the movie and then decided to to, to Han Solo Greedo this fucking shit and, <laughs> and say, you is know that... what? We can't be we can't be the aggressors in here. Let's make the aliens shoot first. Or and maybe... they forgot to change the end of the movie. Or maybe went to assume that the Honduran army let out a full assault against an alien race. <laughs> Possible. Uh, so Brooke sees that this is the last alien left. So there were only five, apparently, total. Uh, I counted three. To the what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? I'm not. I'm, I, I, I don't want to. There weren't many. That. I'm six beers in. I don't want to defend that shit. So he talks to the alien, and he says that we either fight each other to the death or we call a truce, and I don't have anything left to fight you with. So the alien pushes some buttons on his wrist device, which you'd <laughs> think is the bomb. I it's not. It's the, up, but fuck. it's the garage door to the cave. <laughs> he, op- he presses some buttons. The cave opens. Brush, Brooks wishes the alien luck and walks out the door. He sees the chopper flying overhead and starts to wave it down. And the alien ship just kind of fucks off. <laughs> he just goes, whoop, and flies away. Bye, have a good earth. <laughs> we hear the chopper getting closer. We, we can't show it. We just have to assume it's there by the helicopter noise yeah. and the angle of the camera. And the movie mercifully ends. <sighs> Who? Fuck you, Asylum. D- what You're a bad pile people. Of shit. What a pile of shit. God, I'm exhausted. And I, I keep feeling like it's the last straw with Asylum, but people keep picking them. <laughs> I, I will always try to pick one of them. I want no. a job with them. <laughs> I want to I'm see the learning board Russian with the with the jargon permanently on there. Like I want to see the fucking asylum offices. Start start learning <laughs> conversion rates of it. start learning conversion rates of ruples to dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 gonna walk by offices with guys in track suits and everybody like, don't look in there. Don't, 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 yeah, I, I wouldn't get involved unless you want one of those uh, Colombian neckties. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? It won't be. <laughs> Fuck. I could live my own born into mafia story. <laughs> go to work for asylum. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm going to office in a conference room. There's a bunch of guy tracks I'd be like, y- "Y'all come with any luggage, assholes?" And then they'd shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> He's very harmful stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know where it started, but we ended here. <laughs> oh, Christ. 
Okay. The time. <laughs> time to put up that big old zero with the quiz. <laughs> oh, um, let fuck. me tell y'all something. These are the most dog shit of dog shit questions I've ever come up with in my life. <laughs> because there's nothing there. <laughs> It's six assholes walking through the woods for yeah. the, most of the movie. Oh, dog, but, but dog shit how, though? Oh, they're terrible questions. Oh, man. A lot yeah. of how many things and... Oh. <laughs> <sighs> I gotta make sure I, st- I keep it close, you know? Shit. I'm trying to win yeah. this thing, assholes. Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull away from you. <laughs> it's my last so chance to ready? put up points. Y'all ready? Yeah. I'm ready. All right, question number one. Uh, in which direction will the chopper be for extraction? Oh, son of a bitch. Question two. How many people have red forehead lamps? <sighs> after Falk tu- after, uh, after touched the mystery goo, how many times was she told to take a seat? Oh, man. It was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Question four. How wide is the wingspan of the alien ship? Oh, my God. Thank you. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay. That, nope, it can't be exact nope. because they didn't give an exact. They didn't give an exact, but if you know it, you know it. Okay. And question five: How many buttons were on the alien's wrist pad? Oh, I can see it. But was it? Shit. <laughs> this sucks. Fuck! I gotta go. Okay, I'm gonna go with my gut. I, I could be very, very wrong. All right. Question one: Which direction was the chopper gonna be for extraction? South. West. It was south. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> How many people have red forehead lamps? I had two. I also said two. It was two. Yes. Hey. This isn't going according to plan at all. <laughs> <laughs> How many times was Falk told to take a seat? Four. I also said four. <laughs> it was three. <laughs> oh, ah. damn it. How wide is the wingspan of the alien ship? I don't know. I said 50 meters. It's twice the height, which was 40 to 50 feet. Okay. You going to do the math for me or So not? it's 80 to 100, 80 to 100 feet. feet. Jesus okay. Christ. Yes. That's, that's <laughs> correct. I wasn't going to give it to you. <laughs> Y'all are tied two to two. No. How many? Oh, yes. How, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. How many buttons were on the alien's wrist pad? Oh, my God. Four? I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm going to say eight. It was eight. Damn it. (laughs) Yes. Because they were doubled up, right? It was two rows. Exactly. (sighs) I was having the same conundrum, Chase. The exact same conundrum. Was was it it two rows of buttons? (laughs) That was the one that I came up with right whenever we were about to record. Because when I saw they were doubled up, I said, perfect. That's the one. Oh, my God. Oh, fantastic. (sighs) <sighs> that didn't go according to plan at all. Y'all got way too many of those. <laughs> oh, I have a, I've got a lovely little lead now. Oh yeah, we'll be hearing that stupid Van Damocles music again. <laughs> so the current standing is me in first with sixteen, John in second with thirteen, and Blake in third with ten. Who uh, well, clinched it? Even if more even if Blake gets all her. five. Uh, I gotta get all five. I, even if you get all five, I'm still in. I clinched. I've clinched at least. Yeah, but I get second to go, place. I get to compete. Yes. Well, what about the quiz? Oh shit! I forgot about the quiz. Fuck. It's anybody's Never mind. game. Never mind. Still game. anybody's game. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Oh the, yeah, I forgot that we're still doing the the, the exam at the end. Yeah. Shit. Anybody's Never game. Never mind. It's still anybody's game. <laughs> but still, I'll, I'll take. I'll take a six point lead. Yeah, three I mean, point it's, lead. it's good to go in with a good lead, but I'm ah. just, I just can't wait to play my fucking Seagal music, man. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right, you haven't gotten to play it yet. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. It's wasting <laughs> away over there. <laughs> All right, so, John, 
close us out with the final pick of season six. All right. Um, let's, 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 uh, let's have a little poetry jam right now. Oh, come on. Hear me now, friends, for the day is at hand. Where once there was drought, new life springs from the land. Young plants <laughs> thrusting forth from deep under the sand. Our once dull existence will now be made grand. A darkness is lifted from where once it had been. A treasure is found that long went unseen. A place oh. where there once had been a blank screen. No. Now filled with no. the light of a film by Neil Breen. No! no! We're watching Fateful Findings, y'all. Chase, you dumb fuck. Yes. Fateful Findings. It's happening. He started saying things that rhyme with Breen, and I knew it was coming. Chase, you've lost your Cajun card. I fucking hate you. (laughs) (laughs) This all could have been fucking avoided. Every bit of it. You fucking asshole. There was no way I was saving no. it until the last movie pick. Doesn't matter. What's the point of you winning these things <laughs> if you ain't going to do that? God damn it. Uh, so what's it back on? So good. What platform is it back on? Um, I'd rather not say yet. Oh, we got to fucking oh, come on it or something? God no, damn. No, no. I have, to, I have there's two options. It, oh, here we go. It's on Pornhub, isn't it? Uh, one of the options is Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other option? That that stupid version where it's on a on a virtual living room? <laughs> uh, no, our our boy Jason held it down sent me like a link it was on like facebook or something it was very weird um (laughs) but i haven't checked that one in a while but let's say how long do we have the i just checked the pornhub one before we started and it's still there so fuck (laughs) now what's gonna happen if it's gone i don't know it won't be we're good it's gonna be gone Then then we're gonna whatever the hell that bigfoot porno you had us try to watch we're going to pivot and watch something else. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, gentlemen. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Son of a bitch. Revenge is so sweet. Um, you know what it is. I don't need to we write it down. and talk about it. Who gives a fuck? Do it for the people that are listening that maybe haven't been with us since this whole thing started. What's the point of doing the show anymore <laughs> if we can't keep them from watching the movie? <laughs> Uh, so was that it? Did, did John win the podcast because yeah, he got it through? Get the fucking point now. Game over. Oh God, I'm so mad now. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, I've been trying to watch this movie for literal years, <laughs> <laughs> and I've been foiled many, many times. The correct word isn't foiled; it was fucked. Yes, I got. F- yes, <laughs> I got fucked. Rat fucked. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, very Good. excited. Yeah, tell us about the movie. What's it about? Oh, man. You made me do this. All right. Uh, it's directed by a egomaniac named Neil Breen. Um, <laughs> uh, the synopsis. A computer scientist slash novel writer with supernatural power <laughs> begins to hack into secret government files. And when his relationship with his girlfriend crumbles, he reunites with his childhood girlfriend through mystical forces. But soon, the mystical forces start to prevent him from revealing the hacked files. He must now face the dire and fateful consequences of his actions. Uh, And and you want to talk about a movie whose set was rife with sexual assaults. It was probably this thing. (laughs) No, I mean... by all accounts, his sets are very professional. But is it, it doesn't, isn't there a lot of, like, creepiness in this movie with him and the, and the girls? Believe me, it can't be all that fucking great if we gotta watch it on Pornhub. <laughs> well, he just, he keeps his stuff, like, real close to the chest. Like, you have to buy it from him. So, when you buy it, 
um, you know, he's going to send you a, a burned DVD with the name written on it. How much, like is he, how much is he charging? Because I'd almost rather that. It's like $25. It's $25? Not... Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, he doesn't fuck around. All right. Be a first <sighs> time we watch a movie on Pornhub. Wonderful. Well, uh, you know, like I said, I'll send you the other link and see if it still works. It Maybe you won't work. have to watch it on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> we're over here. I remember there was a time where we're like, oh, we don't want to sully people's Amazon watch list with these movies. Now we got to go to porn yeah. sites to watch them. Yeah. Everybody has to go to... <laughs> No, no, I swear it's for the fucking podcast. <laughs> Just put on your private private browsing. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, let's see, a couple of reviews. Five stars. An astounding vision of a singular man. Five stars. Wonderful garbage. Five stars. A formative experience. <laughs> so we're getting the good stuff this time. Silence, as yeah. it should be. It's all your fault, Jace. <sighs> that way, okay. No, no, there is no excuse. None. Because you fell for the bait. You didn't fall for it. That you even was knew a- it was fucking bait. You just didn't care because you're fucking <laughs> selfish and greedy. <laughs> that That happened a million years ago. You know how long it's been? Since episode two of this season, I don't care. I'm so mad right now. You know how much has happened in the world since episode two of this? It seems like it's been five years. Uh, it really does. God, you know what else seems like it's it. been five years? How long we've been keeping that movie from him? <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and now it's all over. That is literally true. <laughs> Oh, it's man. all over now. We finally so have to watch it. Congratulations, John. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. On that I can somber finally note. get erections again. <laughs> <laughs> now we gotta say something nice. Oh, you can't ask me to say anything nice after that. <laughs> but, okay, we learned we got the terms bloop and kablooey. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> That's my say something nice. <laughs> Fair he enough. went bloop, then kablooey. Kablooey? Yeah. Yep. Bupkis. <laughs> Meshuggah. <laughs> well, that's all Meshuggah. Uh, for, for me, um, I thought the concept of the little explodey ball was kind of cool. The concept. The execution garbage obviously but uh you know for an alien weapon thing okay uh like i said there was a few times where i paused the movie and i thought that's a nice shot and then the second i hit unpause the camera veered wildly in an angle (laughs) and it was gone forever (laughs) Mm. oof that was a rough one it really was so depressed now. <laughs> so you're not even gonna say anything nice. I, I did. It bloop and kablooey. That's all I got. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on in Animal Crossing, guys? Well, we've moved on from Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> we moved on from Animal Crossing to a game that's nigh thirty years old. <laughs> <laughs> we've gone from a game that works perfectly. To a broken fucking mess. <laughs> uh, I can I convinced Blake that we should start playing uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic online for some reason. Yeah, which uh, may in fact still end my marriage no matter what. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, uh, Blake almost ended his marriage with his WoW obsession. Yeah. Uh, many many moons ago. And has been forbidden from playing WoW again. But this ain't WoW. No, it's not. But I was still given a veiled threat whenever I started playing it, so. 
uh, I think it's safe to say, given our uh, two sessions that we've had so far, the frustration and anger out of playing the game. <laughs> yeah, we're four hours in, basically, and I cursed through the entirety of it. I hate the map. Yeah. The map is fucking broken. The waypoint system sucks horribly. And the fact that the game's this old and it's still that bad is shocking. And the whole idea was, it, let me tell you, the, the whole reason I started it is because we wanted to have two Sith players named Funkulon and Trunculon. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole thing. And then I got news this morning that there's a fucking crunky line in the mix, and I'm not happy about it. Oh my god. Look, okay. I had regret that I went with Sith Sorcerer instead of Assassin. Too bad. Because because I see all these assassins running around with their double-bladed lightsabers, and they're awesome. And I said, well, I want a double-bladed lightsaber. So instead of us starting and saying, hey, I don't want to be this character. I want to start a new one. And you have to like walk hand in hand with me going through all that stupid shit at the academy again i just burned through the thing and i got caught up to where we are nobody has to miss a day and then he's getting all butthurt about it because he's got a k in his name instead of a t yeah because the whole idea was we we're only gonna play together <laughs> and it was supposed to keep me from losing my marriage now it's like, well, what if I want to start another character? Well, I'll tell you what. You want to start another character, Crunculon no. will hold your hand no. through it. I'm not going through the Sith Academy again. That place can <laughs> fucking burn in hell. Okay, so so, so nothing happened? No, something happened. I'm, I was betrayed. <laughs> I want to go back to Animal Crossing. I'm still playing Animal Crossing. I did make a million bells on my own without the fucking stock market. How about that? Well, there you go. Just fucking grabbing them oranges. <laughs> Did that in a week. Made a million bells. So I'm starting to wonder, if I can make a million bells in a week, well, I don't need the fucking turnips. Ain't that right, You're John? spending all... Absolutely. Yeah. You're spending an awful lot of time shaking trees. It doesn't matter, though. I ain't fucking stressing out about turnip prices. <laughs> Well, I haven't played the turnip market in weeks. I ain't get, look, I got, I got bad enough anxiety for me to have to... I don't need to check the fucking stock market twice a fucking day. <laughs> uh, I, I still haven't gotten I any of those assholes I wanted to move out. I have... <laughs> dude, I have a problem when I sit at a red light with my windshield wipers on because I worry other people are thinking mine are going too fast. I don't need to check the stock market twice a fucking day. What? <laughs> that's, that's bananas. Look at this asshole with his fast ass that's women. That's what I think they're thinking on. about me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this motherfucker <laughs> think he is? Like, I, I think they think like, look at this fucking pansy ass dude running his fucking windshield wipers ain't even raining that hard. But I'm like, I can't get the timing right. What's wrong with this guy's just, eyeballs? I can't do it. Just scream through the wind. Screaming at you. You're wasting them. <laughs> this is like it's funny and all, but dude, this is like my fucking life. Worried about <laughs> stupid shit like that. And this setting's too slow. This t this setting's too fast. I don't have one in the middle. I, exactly. And people don't understand that. <laughs> and they're judging me. You just have to sit there and, and push the lever down. Down. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Down. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Down. Okay, I found a good rhythm. I just have to keep doing this until this light turns. No. You want to know my strategy for real? You want to see how fucking bad this is? My strategy for real is I make sure that I stop behind the driver's seat of the car next to me so they can't see my windshield. <laughs> so you're... Okay, so instead of... You, you know, okay, you're worrying about them thinking your wipers are too fast. Meanwhile, you're the asshole that's stopping a car length away from the goddamn lights. So? <laughs> I'm worried about you, man. Dude, it's a, it's a real <laughs> fucking problem. Just like you go to Walgreens and the lady's like, the receipt's in your bag. And I'm like, you too, because I was expecting her to say, have a nice day. And now I can't sleep for two fucking days. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Garbage Theater. As always, you can find us online at facebook.com slash garbagetheater, 
on Twitter at Garbage underscore theater and on Instagram at Garbage underscore theater. If you'd care to leave us a review on iTunes, we would very much appreciate it. And if you have a movie suggestion or just want to reach out to us, you can contact us on any of our social channels or email us directly at garbagetheaterpodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all the latest episodes and happenings. Good night, and see you next time, folks. Thank you.